What's up guys, this is DV coming at you with a very, very brief tutorial on SOR Maker Editor for Streets of Rage Remake version 5. Um, by now, the majority of everyone has beaten the game and has unlocked the SOR Maker, or the SOR Editor if you want to prefer, and you want to go ahead and start making your own little twist to the Streets of Rage saga, like make your own things. Uh, the first thing you're going to need, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way, you're going to need whatever images you plan on using to build your stage, of course. Uh, the only, you cannot add characters in this, uh, as they have locked out the coding for it, so you cannot use this. This is to prevent anyone from stealing anything that's already built into the game so if you're coming to me asking for that no you cannot do that and the guys at bomber games forums can confirm this so no that is out of the question uh, with that said the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to do enemy placement uh, show you how to adjust the different enemies that come in make them appear when you want to appear, want them to appear uh, go to different sections of a single stage that you make for yourself and add item placement and showing how how it is when you scroll or go an alternate path so we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, as you can see I've jumped ahead to stage one scene seven of my my street survivors um, but before I start off, hopefully you've added everything into the following directory. Mod, in the Streets of Rage Remake version 5 folder, you go to Mod, and then you go to Games. You make your own folder for the name of the mod that you're making. For me, it's Street Survivors. And everything that you plan on adding in, you're going to have to add it in. As you see, .fpg, you need FPG Edit 2005. Uh, they do have one that helps with transparency. Uh, I will be putting a link to it at, at the video description. I uh, just want to make sure this is how the folder is supposed to be set up your OG music or in .og format. Depending on the number that you have, you can adjust it any way you want. Um, if you have all this together and in the folder, then we can get started. Now, as you notice on the screen before you, you see the um, the lock camera, which the camera will lock here until all enemies are gone. Uh, you see I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six enemies. One will appear. Here I have a Garcia. I have him with a shadow intro. Now, the reason why I have him with a shadow intro is because I want to simulate him coming out of the doorway. And I'll go ahead and hit test so I can simulate this for you. Now as you see, even though it was going as slow, I did manage to go ahead and simulate him coming out of the shadows. Even though that was not my intention to show you that, I had to give you a physical description of how the enemies come out. Uh, as you see, it goes by whichever enemy you placed on the screen first, which happened to be Y signal right down here. Now whenever you place an enemy on the screen, you go to your enemy block you right click on it or hold it and just drag an enemy right onto the screen if you want that enemy to appear first he has to be the first and only enemy on the screen does not matter if it's here or here 
Now, if you want an enemy to appear off screen, it has to be out of Axel's line of sight, which is where these guys are. When you have these guys over here, make sure they're behind the green line. You don't want their hands sticking out to where the game just makes it pop out of nowhere. That makes your mod very ugly. You don't want that. Now, if you feel like that enemy is not the one you want, simply either let it go back down here, or if you want to remove the enemy or item from off screen, hold drag on it and just drag them to the bin up here. We're going to leave them right there for right now. Now when you're done moving or setting up enemies and you have all of your enemies off screen like you've beat them up after there are no more there, just press right on the keyboard and keep moving them over as far over as you want until you feel this is the next spot you want more enemies to appear. As you can see I have it to where I have another lock camera where the camera stops and this is where more enemies appear. I have this guy coming out of the sky, a drop down. I have these two guys coming out of the shadows. And I have these five gentlemen appearing off, you know, off screen. Three, you know, three from the left to, to the right. As long as they're not within the highlighted green box, then they will appear off screen unless you do a shadow intro or a drop intro. Now, you can have it to where when you break to the next scene well I'm gonna drag it over a little bit you can have you can have it to where if the next scene is this and there are no other enemies out here you can have them kneeling down as I'll show you here I'll have a uh, Donovan here I'll just drop him in there and I'll right click on him where you can adjust his stats you don't have to give him the name Donovan you can have him a Gonzalez or a Z or a Reed or a Martin. It really doesn't matter what the name will be. It doesn't really matter the palette either, but it just depends. I would say make the palette specific to the stage you're on, not the scene, just the stage. You can adjust the life bar here as much as you want and give him an extra life bar if you want. You can have him normal or reverse. You can have him walking in or standing or shadow intro, or arcade intro or crouch. As I said, I wanted Crouch, so when I get here, he's already on screen. But I'm not going to use him, because I already have seven more gentlemen appearing. Now, when I'm done with them, I just keep scrolling over until I make it to the next point, which is right here. Now, when I'm at the end of my stage, or end of all enemies appearing, they'll just go on to the next stage, which is scene 8. If I have no more end scenes, I could just have them walk off screen. End scene will allow it to fade out and fade into another one. If I just want them walking to the next scene, I can go ahead and do that. Now, you can set up music depending on what track you want it. Again, as according to the folder here it will appear down here you can have extra things if you want like a sniper point or trigger falling barrels or add a can add a bird add a cat like depending on what you want different events that you can have appear here but it's just extra um, if you want to add weather effects you can with this block here the events block you can add different objects if you like like you can have a container if you want or you can have the arcade machine you know general stuff you find in the Streets of Rage saga if you want your music to be playing all the way into scene 8 which happens to be right over here I'm not gonna save it you can switch it over to scene 8 and as you can see I have scene 8 and I have it set for this music uh, if you want shadows you can add shadows reflective it really depends on the stage layer that you're using and you can have it set for automatic if you want uh, if you think you have a boss coming up you can also set that as well um, it's just basic general stuff here I will also be covering how to go to a split path if you probably seen the previous two videos I added a split path what you're looking at is the alternate path. We're going to go to where the path actually splits. Not scene 6, it should be scene 4. No, scene 3. Okay, now in scene 3, if you notice this little icon right here that says go, 
that means the background that I've used or layer that I've used allows me to go to another part of the map I can have it set that way I could have just left this as a piece of background if I wanted I didn't necessarily have to do this but it was necessary for me because I wanted to have something different so if you want to add another scene in that particular area where it does say go after everything is done what I would do is go to add alternate route and drag it onto the screen like I did right here and I would right click on it and it will ask me what scene do I want to go to and I would just say scene 7 which happens to be the area that I played now if you want to add it to where your stuff goes to the next scene um, you can have it depending on where you want to start your stage you can have it scroll left or scroll right your call and if you want to have him walk to the next scene you will go down here to your scene button and you can have him skip whatever scene you want to depending on your preference you can make your mod as crazy or in ingenuity or just as creative or in just good or bad as you want it you just have to experiment with it I really can't put it into words but it's just best to experiment with the way you want it done um, for any time again if you want to add like a fade out you can just go right here to the end scene icon and you can put it up here in the same block as the enemies that appear here so when your character walks to that part it will fade out and then fade into the next scene which happens to be the warehouse scene right here I'm gonna not save it and it just goes straight there now I'm just going back up to where my other guys are and again the camera will not move further until you clear all enemies out now that doesn't necessarily mean it's you know a done deal you can have it to where it's free moving now if you want to have it to where it's free moving what you would do is add this free camera right side that means you can have the enemies appear in any form shape or way you want uh, as far as particular area of movement that you can go in uh, a prime example would be the the office building from Streets of Rage 3 or Bare Knuckle 3 where you had to go ahead and rescue the chief of police that's a prime example to where you're free moving back and forth trying to escape the building and save the chief of police before his health runs out that's a very prime example for those of us who remember that uh, whenever you beat all enemies here just like the lock camera icon it will tell you to just go forward go straight just keep on going and keep moving again you can add different items you can add your weather effects you can add health items uh, extra life one up it's a lot easier if you add a barrel and have this barrel on the same line as the item to where it it simulates it popping out of the barrel or whatnot um, when you're ready to add a boss I'll go to scene f uh, five no scene six which happened to be my normal route boss you can select any enemy it, it could even be a regular Joe Schmo he could be a boss if he wanted to and just as usual if you beat the boss then you basically have all enemies die or walk off screen um, I just use Antonio as the boss here I have him as a boss character I have him walking around he is definitely my boss character but then again I have it set to where it just ends the stage completely no matter what but he is indeed my boss character as you can see down here I can have him a normal enemy and it would just end or I have him as boss and it just ends the stage completely but that's just a a good idea of what I mean and you can have as many enemies on the screen as you want to at one time if you want a real challenge or you can have it set up like mine where it's just a few enemies at a time to where it gives you time to recoup now as you're setting up the stage you always want to make sure that you have specific items on the ground that you can find that you can use and in Streets of Rage Remake enemies can eat your food and pick up your items and weapons and use them against you so you have to use that with a tongue-in-cheek attitude now as you notice 
there's a difference here. Notice how on scene three at the pier can have a, a chopper or the um the helicopter appear outside and then when I go to scene four which happens to be the boat only the helicopter because you want to always make sure the scene you have corresponds to what special you can have come up like the police car or the helicopter or both if you're inside of a building it would look very far-fetched for a police car or helicopter to get there if you have that set up that's very very bad planning you want to go ahead and set that all the way to none because you don't want either one of those things to appear in places they shouldn't appear like the inside of this boat right here I mean who who wants the helicopter or car coming in there it makes no sense it makes zero sense now if you have music that's ongoing or you wanted to switch you would go down here and use it to alternate route or next scene you can have it set up that way if you feel like you want to have boss music coming in like whoever's your boss like I have here Barbone is the boss but I want to have the music fade into boss music I would use the um, the fade into boss music and I would select what track I would want I mean you could name it what you could name the music track whatever you want but I just name it by number because it's easier for me to remember and you could have that playing if you like I mean if you want to hear what it is that's what this is what this is I mean that's what I would have it you probably didn't hear it I'll do it again that's what I had there but that's just the prime example of what you can have going for you there you don't necessarily have to do it but again set up your items your enemies your weapons and weather effects depending on your background I mean this is your mod I'm not saying my street survivors is yours but what you create is your world within the streets of rage universe you're creating your own chapter within that universe you're making it the way you want to make it the only thing you could add in is just the background how you tell the story of Axel and friends is completely up to you I hope this satisfies this tutorial. It's going on 20 minutes and didn't mean to go on as long as I did, but I did it for good measure. So, till the next time, guys and gals, this is DV signing out.